it's like 50 years old, so it doesn't like getting up in the morning. That's two cylinders. There's all three. It fires on one, sputters on two for a little bit, and then when all three kick in, you can finally let it sit and warm up. Okay, so now we're getting the tractor topped off. We got our shirt can here, and we just vice grip the handle down and just let it go. There's a fine line between lazy and efficient. I mean, I don't know which side I'm on, but there's definitely a line. I guess I don't have to yell, the camera's over there, but the mic's right here. Actually, I don't have to yell or not, this is kind of loud. We'll figure it out together. So, first thing we're gonna do is go over here and drop off the forks that are on the bucket behind you. To do that, we raise you up. We drop the forks. And now, there you are. We head down the road. So as some of you may know, I live on a dirt road. Uh, what you may not know is this dirt road is part of a road district, and uh, there's 12 miles of dirt road in this district. And of those 12 miles, our stretch from where it meets the paved road, way off over there, all the way down to Grumpy's house, our other neighbors, my house over here, and off a little ways, is the best stretch of dirt road in the district. And the reason it's in such good shape, or was, because that guy right there, named Grumpy, has been maintaining it since back when this was a horse and buggy trail. I mean, maybe not quite that old, but it's pretty close. Uh, Grumpy, from the whole time he's lived out here, has been using his own tractor with his own fuel and maintaining this road, and he has also been buying his own rock out of his own pocket and putting on this road to keep it rocked, because the road district hasn't touched this road in, according to Grumpy, about 12 years. Since I moved out here, I got my little tractor, uh, I've been helping Grumpy maintain it. Uh, we come out here together and we grade the road and blade it smooth and fix up all the rock and keep it in good shape. So it has been the best road in the district until now. Our road district board members, I've decided they're going to redo all the roads in the district, even though they don't have the money to. They did all the research, came up with all the numbers, figured out what it was going to cost, looked at their budget, realized they don't have anywhere near the money, but they're going to do it anyway. So our road had a very good solid base, hard as a rock, was very smooth and had good gravel on it because this guy keeps buying gravel and putting on it. That was until last week when some dump trucks started showing up and dumping dirt right over the top of the gravel. This is all now uh, through this section here, a little over a foot of fill dirt brought in and put over the top of everything. And some guy came out with a tractor and box scraper and did a horrible job of leveling it. And then they tell us, oh, well, don't worry, we're gonna put rock over the top of it. So I say, uh, are you gonna grade it first and compact it? They say, oh, our guy graded it, and the car is driving over it until we get the rock done. That'll be the compaction. So in addition to all the other jobs I've had and have, dirt work and excavation, road building is one of them. So I know that's not how it works. What happens when you do that? They put down very dry dirt no compaction, very rough grading. Say when they put the rock over the top, they'll smooth out the rock. Well, when you have a big low spot here and a big high spot there and you smooth it out with rock, you're ending up with very thick rock here and very thin rock there. This thick rock will chew out, that thin rock will go away, and then you have rough road and mud. 
The other problem is when you put in over a foot of dry fill dirt and don't compact it, put rock over the top of it right before winter, as soon as the ground gets saturated, that rock pushes down into the dirt. So all the rock you put on top will disappear down into the dirt and you'll be left with mud on top. The problem is our road was just fine. There was nothing wrong with it until they dumped all this dirt on it. Look at this big hump here, dives off into a big old hole right here. Look at this, dips down right here, goes back up. This was all perfectly smooth before, way higher on this side than it is on this side. And if we go down to the other end, it just gets worse and worse. So Grumpy and I are out here grading the road. At least we can get it graded smooth before they put the rock on it. That way the rock is a nice even layer all the way through. We can't do much about the compaction because we don't have any compactors, uh, but at least we can have a smooth road until the rock disappears. So I was telling them that your name of Grumpy is very ironic until someone, until someone messes with your road. <laughs> then it's very fitting. So we're gonna get it fixed. Grumpy doesn't wanna talk, he's mad, he just wants to work. So you can see their graded road. Look at this huge hole over here they cut in. I did the measurements from the bottom of this hole to the high spot over here, there's a, a 13 inch difference in height. And they're saying that's a graded road. So I'm gonna go over there just past where Grumpy is right now. There's a big hump and I'm gonna start cutting it with my blade because my blade will cut better than his box. And I'm gonna start bringing it back this way and kind of fill this low spot here. And we're gonna do the same thing with some of the highs and low spots down here and up over the hill and around the corner and all that. I'll start cutting out the high spots and loosening them up since I have the blade and then bringing them to the low spots where Grumpy will use his box scraper to drag it all smooth. to do is cut down that hump and then dump it in the low spot and I'm actually trying to drag most of the material through the low spot to this far side of it that way I can come over here put my blade down and back blade it back through there to make it a smooth pass through it ideally See where the blade skipped that spot right there, that means it's still low. So we're gonna harvest a little more material from right here, cause that's still a little high and bring that up without making another low spot where we harvest the material from. That's the tricky part. All right, we're getting somewhere. Okay, so I got the high and low spots down by uh, my neighbor's driveway 
knocked out pretty good. And when they did this, they made such a high spot on either side of her driveway that when the water pulls up, it was gonna pull up right in the entryway of her driveway and make a big old water mess that she has to drive through every time. So I lowered everything on either side of her driveway and made where the entrance to her driveway goes in a higher spot so that it won't pull with water, which was completely stupid of them to do, but they don't know what they're doing, so they do stupid stuff. So I did that. Uh, Grumpy is working on making sure his driveway is not a low spot. It's, his is decent, but he's helping out. So he's cutting a bunch of material out of the middle and moving it into these big, stupid holes they made. Uh, my driveway's got a massive hole right in the front of it, like, like a foot, foot and a half deep, big old stretch they made right in front of it. I'll deal with that part later. I wanna get the rest of this fixed up first. Um, we're gonna end up having a lake in front of our driveway is what's gonna happen, but there's not enough material here to completely fill that hole unless we completely wipe out everything they brought in, which I'm debating doing. So we're coming up here now higher. Um, this is, you see the tractors in the a deep spot here. This right here is gonna fill with water, which we're on top of a hill here. Why is there any need to make a spot that fills with water? Uh, so I'm gonna start up there cut down some of these high points in the middle. It's kind of hard to see it right next to the tractor. It dips down, goes back up, kind of fill that in, blend all this together and off the hill here and kind of slope it to the side so the water gets down over there and heads off towards that big field instead of staying in the road. When you're building roads or maintaining them or even designing them from scratch, the number one consideration is always water flow. Water flow dictates everything. In this case, they never thought a bit about water. So we're trying to change that a little bit and make the water pull up where we want and run off where we want. The problem with this road is it's a bowl in here. It's downhill all the way into it. There's nowhere for water to run away because everything goes uphill. So the water runs down here and then sits and saturates. There's this big old open field right here. Why make the road the ditch that fills with water when we can kind of direct it off that way and saturate into the ground over here? which it does pretty well because this is all sand. We're in the desert. So it does dissipate in the ground good. Why make the road the spot where the water saturates? It's, like I said, they don't, they don't know what they're doing and they screwed up what was a very good road. So I'm gonna get this here tuned up and kind of fixed up some and Grumpy's moving some bulk material there to like kind of re completely reshape everything. And then I'll go down and help him get everything smoothed up. So back to it we go. Okay, here's another thing that shows inexperience. Uh, there's a lot of roads everywhere where dirt road comes onto paved road and there's an approach like this. And you notice at some of those intersections, the pavement stays nice and clean. Other ones, there's rocks drug out all through the road always and always needs to be swept off. If you're wondering why that is, it's because of this step right here. Now, when they came out and dumped all this material in here and graded the road, they made this big crown right here and it was super high and then tapered down to be dead level with the top of the pavement. So it was a smooth transition. But this isn't final grade, this is subgrade. This is what you put down, shape and compact before you put rock on it. Shaping and compacting are the two things they didn't do. They got the putting it on the ground part right. But subgrade needs to be lower than final grade so that when you put the rock in, the rock will be at this level straight across. So I got down about four inches right here at the entryway, which is pretty good. And then the rock will thin off to three, two inches, whatever, as it goes along, depending on how solid the road is. Because if you have a downhill slope 
onto your pavement intersection and the subgrade is dead even with your pavement. Now when you add that thicker rock to it and go up, the rock is just gonna constantly get drug out onto the road and that's a problem you'll constantly fight. So I came up here and cut a step at the end of the pavement so when we fill with the rock, the rock will be the level of the pavement and then taper away without thinning out on the road until it gets way off up there. That thicker rock at the beginning, once we compact it down, will give a good solid base that won't chunk out and start the uh, washboards as it goes from cars making the transition from pavement to rock. Then the rock can thin out a little bit as it goes just for mud and dust control. But at the beginning, you need a good solid and hard layer of rock butts up to the pavement so that you have an easy transition that doesn't start the washboards that would then continue down the whole road. Now digging all this out right here and creating that step and reshaping the road away from the pavement instead of sloping down into it also gave me a ton of material to bring down there and fill in that big huge hole they had. So I kind of solved two problems at once here. Grumpy's doing the same thing down there right now. He's taking where they just made a massive hump of material, cutting down that big high spot, putting in some low spots. So hopefully it kind of disperses the water out towards that big empty field over there instead of pulling it in the road. Now I'm not saying I'm the most knowledgeable road builder out there and the best equipment operator there ever was. Not even close. But come on, water flow and the difference between subgrade and final grade are two of the most basics of dirt work. All right, she fires up a little better when it's a little warmer outside. So I'm done with all my heavy cutting and filling in this area and Grumpy looks like he's about done with all his down there. So I'm going to spin my blade around backwards so that I can back drag to smooth all this stuff out using the back side of the blade. And then I can be looking forward instead of doing this with my neck the whole time and being sore, so. And I know the wannabe super operators out there are gonna go off with their stuff about, if you were a real operator, you'd finish grade going forward. Well, guess what, dummy? I am going forward. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, and I don't know how well you can see this, hopefully pretty decent, is I'm cutting the high spots with my bucket, and then filling the low spots with the material I pulled out, and dragging it smooth behind me all at the same time. So but as you can see, this road now is pretty level all the way down here. Other than this giant hole right here, which is just gonna turn into a lake right in front of my driveway once it rains. But without hauling in a couple loads of material to fill that, which we don't have, not too much I can do. So uh, where I gotta pull in and out is kind of elevate a little. I'll put some more material in there. I'll take it out of my driveway and bring down so that we won't have to drive through the lake to get into our driveway, but this is not ideal. So where Grumpy's at needed major, major work. So he's literally scooping up material and moving it and dumping a new spot and then we'll drag it down and then whatever little highs and lows we have, we'll repeat that same process we just did right here. And it will look like this all the way out of here. Grumpy and I have been working on this all morning, but now it's lunchtime, so we've got the tractors parked and I'm uh, gonna go get something to eat. But let me show you where we're at here. All right, so the big huge hole in front of my driveway is gonna turn into a lake I didn't get to, but got everybody else's tuned up pretty good. And look at this nice, I mean, shadows make it so you can't see anything, so I don't know why I did that, but nice smooth road all the way down all the way out to the pavement, so big improvement. What are you looking at? Oh, I thought it was a scratch. It's a uh, um, clear stuff they put on. Oh, there's scratches too, if you look. Well, there's plenty of them. You don't have scratches in A couple dents. I even got a couple dents with scratches in them. Oh. That's the good stuff. Oh, look at that. You can go 50 miles an hour now. Yeah, maybe we should put the bumps back. Or maybe we ought to make an obstacle course with some great big rocks so they got to go and weave between them. 
As someone who owns nothing but four-wheel drive vehicles and Jeeps, I'm more than okay with that. Oh, baby. You good? You like pepper? Uh, spicy? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you woke up real quick. <laughs> so we came down here to lunch at the only restaurant in town. It's called the Feeding Trough, and it's uh, that trailer right there. And it's parked outside the only store in town, which is that house right there. So, not a lot of options here, but luckily it's good stuff, so it's totally mm -hmm. worth it. It's almost close enough we could drive the tractors here. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't make it by lunch, but we could, we'd make it. We'd have to get up 5 o'clock in the morning. We'd make it. So, we're going to have lunch and uh, discuss taking over the road department. And so, we're pretty sure the main person on the road department quit anyway. Um, I think we can take over. I think a good plan to be. We'll take over. We'll blow the entire budget on paving our road up to our houses, and then we'll resign. Does that work? Sure. That's gonna work great. So. Once they sewer. Yeah, let's get some lunch. All right, so we got our lunch. It was really good. It was excellent. Yeah, that little trailer right there. If you ever need food and you're in alfalfa, I tell you to choose that place, but you don't get a choice. That's the only place. So good thing it's good. <laughs> so some guy come over here in a welded rear end jeep and tore up my gravel, went off road without permission. I don't know who would have done that. Uh, probably Riley. It was it was definitely Riley's instructions. <laughs> it, it Not was... my choice. I did what Riley said. <laughs> cool. But luckily, I know a guy with a tractor who can go smooth it all out. Yeah. Well, you know what? I just left it. So, oh, I got gravel in my bucket. <laughs> so we're back from lunch. Uh, and dropped Grumpy off, and we decided that we need to take over the road department. Not that that's what either of us like want to want to do, but I think we need to take over the road department. Uh, my my wife's suggestion. So my wife's suggestion too. Managing it. Yes, manage the road department. So. We're gonna. Plus, we're smart enough to use the equipment. We don't have to have somebody else. <laughs> no, smart enough to use the equipment is the correct word, but we can use the equipment. So, um, we're gonna see how that goes. To the next road department meeting. Uh, everyone on the road department right now wants to quit, and I think the one lady kind of already did. So, might not be too hard to take over the road department. So, you are looking at the new road department, I guess. <laughs> The new interim road department until we take over and make it official. So we got our road all smoothed out and done. Apparently at some point they're bringing in the gravel and we'll probably have to blade the gravel smooth too. And then I'd, uh, I don't know about that. We'll see yeah. how, what, how good of a job they do. And then uh, I'd like to rent a roller. Uh, once we get it in and blade it down and then roll it. We probably should contact them and see what they have for yard wise for gravel yeah they ordered one dump truck load of gravel for a half mile of road obviously that's not gonna work worthless so mm -hmm. that's why we need to be the new road department so we'd know that stuff right so i think that's the plan so we go get a roller well we gotta wait for gravel then we can go get a roller well, we roll that before we put gravel down. i know that'd be ideal but then we need to roll it twice so we need to know when the gravel's showing up so we can roll that right before, put the gravel down, blade it, roll the gravel, and then we have a good road. Yep. Um, four duck. So that's our plan, and that's it for this video. Um, we had to film all this. That way we could make enough money off this YouTube video to put fuel back in the tractors <laughs> and hopefully pay for lunch too. So, uh, yeah. So, oh, Grumpy bought lunch. So, yeah, you guys owe Grumpy enough views to pay for lunch. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> all right that is all it right. for this one we're all gonna go home and i'll see you guys next time